Greetings to every FPL manager out there, a new season is upon us and we can't wait for all the fun and excitement. Seriously, we can't wait. So we're starting early this year and here's our first episode. 10 rules for a solid lineup. Let's start with the first rule, selecting your goalkeepers. I see many managers making this mistake every year, picking two premium goalkeepers is a waste of money as only one of them can play in a game week. There are two methods that experienced managers, myself included, will use. Firstly, choose a premium goalkeeper who is a guaranteed starter that can get you at least 10 clean sheets like De Gea, Ederson and Loris. Pick one of them and pick a 4 millions bench goalkeeper whom you have no intention of playing. This is commonly known as the select and forget method. These two goalkeepers will cost a maximum of 10 millions, so you've already saved 1 million. The other method that many use is selecting two keepers that play week in week out with their fixtures complementing well and they should cost you a maximum of 9.5 million. The second rule, never waste budget on the bench. As only 11 players can be used in a single game week, it is more or less pointless, no pun intended, to have players of 5.5 million or more on your bench. They are unlikely to feature for you unless one of your starting 11 doesn't play. There are managers who will have a bench filled with the cheapest options in the game whom are unlikely to feature for their clubs. But the gems that the pros like to find are the cheapest options that are actually starters. An example of this for the coming season may be one Bissaka whom for the moment is expected to be Palace's starting right back. The third rule, avoid taking many risks. Hunches or gut feelings are great if they pay off, but I would only consider going with those later in the season after I've seen every player's performance and it's time to pick my one or two differentials. This principle applies to players from promoted teams. Last season we had high hopes for Richie, Gale, Enns and Nocard, but they mostly disappointed. This season we have Neves, Sesenio and Jota. The same principle applies to Premier League new arrivals. For example, Yarmolenko of West Ham, yes, his record in Dynamo Kiev, 100 and 37 goals and 90 assists in 340 appearances and Dortmund 3 goals and 5 assists in 12 games is impressive but we can never be certain that he'll perform likewise in the Premier League. Same goes to Alisson and Socrates. The fourth rule, plan ahead. Experienced FPL managers select their players and make transfers with the next 4-6 games in mind, so be patient with your players. For example, you choose Aubameyang to start the season and he doesn't produce points in the first two games versus Man City and Chelsea. These are difficult fixtures and any returns from Aubameyang would be a bonus, but the real reason you got him should be for the following run of fixtures. This principle has to be taken into consideration also when making transfers. Don't just buy a player for a single upcoming game week. Let's say Cardiff for example start well and score 4 or 5 goals in their first 2 games versus Bournemouth and Newcastle. Their following game is against Huddersfield, sounds good, right? Well yes, but for a week. Their following fixtures include Arsenal, Chelsea, City, Burnley and Tottenham. Doesn't look so appealing now, doesn't it? Plan ahead and don't waste transfers. The fifth rule. Premium players are not everything. Having balance in your squad is key. This means owning 5 or more premium players with the remainder of your squad being useless is simply a bad idea. Let's say you choose Salah, Kane, Sané, Alonso and De Gea. This totals 47.5 million, leaving you with only 52.5 million for 10 players. That's an average of 5.25 million for each of the remaining 10 players. A better way of doing things is getting one premium player for each position and then adding mid-range and bargain players to give your squad more potential for points. My tip would be to buy one cheap player or two in each line and then to choose mid-range players whom you think will get you a steady flow of points. Finally check how much money you're left with once all players are selected and invest in upgrading a player or two to premium. Next rule, look for set piece takers. It may seem so obvious but many managers forget about this. Players who take free kicks, corners or penalties have better chances of scoring and providing assists. We've recently seen at the World Cup the importance of set pieces with 43% of all goals resulting from set pieces. So what about the Premier League? Stats from last year show that on average 28% of all goals came from a set piece play or a penalty. This equals 285 goals over the season. 
Now let that sink in. Of course we know we don't like homework, so we're working on a list of all players that are likely to be taking corners, free kicks and penalties for each club. And we'll talk about it once the list is complete. Rule number 7. Mind out of position players. You can often gain an advantage over rivals by sniffing out players enlisted in a different position to what they're actually playing. Last year, both Zaha and Arnautovic were listed as midfielders, which they originally were, but during the course of the season, they moved as center forwards. These kinds of position changes make players more appealing. Early signs for the upcoming season show that Diogo Jota of Wolves is listed as a midfielder. However, in the championship he played 46 games, 9 as a forward and the other 37 as a winger same position as Salah. Another worth a mention is Danny Ward of Cardiff. He is listed as a midfielder but last year he made 20 appearances, 16 of them as a center forward. His pitch time is at risk however due to the arrival of Bobby Reed from Bristol City. Defenders can also be wrongly positioned. Last season Kiko Femenia of Watford played 11 of his 23 games as a right midfielder. Beware that the opposite can also occur. For example, Victor Moses, a wing back in Chelsea, was listed as a forward in the World Cup. To rule number 8, World Cup Aftermath. This rule is only useful once every 4 years, but it's very important for the opening weeks of the FPL. Most club managers like to give their players a 3 or 4 week break after the World Cup. Chelsea stars Hazard, Courtois, Cahill, Conte, Batshuayi, Giroud and Loftus-Cheek have all been given 3 weeks off and are expected to return less than a week before the first game week. Leicester's Vardy and Maguire look likely to miss at least their season's opener versus United who will most probably be without Pogba, Rashford, Jones, Fellaini and Lingard. Liverpool will also be affected with Lovren, Alexander-Arnold, Hederson and Mignolet returning late to pre-season preparations. But the most affected clubs are Man City and Tottenham who have no fewer than 7 and 8 players whose national teams went far in the tournament. This includes De Bruyne, Company, Stones, Delft, Sterling, Walker and Mendy, Loris, Trippier, Rose, Vertonghen, Alderville, Ali, Dyer, Dembele and Kane. Kane has vowed to make himself available for the season opener against Newcastle, but all these players need to be selected with extreme caution over the first and second game weeks. And once the season starts, rule number 9, choose your captain wisely. Captaincy makes all the difference in your points total. Most experienced managers follow one simple rule, captaining the player who is most likely to score points and more often than not, this player is your star player who consistently scores big. Last year this was the case with Salah and he very rarely let his managers down. Salah scored points in 27 of the 36 games he played, this included 12 double digit holes. In previous seasons Kane and Aguero have often been the go-to guys, so simply pick the most reasonable captain. As previously explained earlier in rule 3, don't take unnecessary risks with your captain unless you are chasing down your mini league rival and desperately need a differential pick. And last but not least, rule number 10, make the most of your chips. You get two wild cards per season, one which can be used between August and December and another that can be used from January onwards. These chips are priceless and enable you to completely renovate your squad without taking transfer hits. The most successful teams use their chips when they see problems on the horizon like a build up of injuries, a short fixture list and owning players with difficult run of fixtures. It's a long season, so try to be as patient as possible with your wild cards. When using chips, another important thing to consider is double game weeks. These are inevitable as teams progress in different competitions and fixtures are rearranged. Usually between game weeks 34 and 38, several teams will have two fixtures in a single game week. And that's the best time to use bench boost, triple captain and free hit. On paper, if a player has two fixtures in one game week, you would expect more points than usual. Most experienced managers save their second wildcard in preparations for those double game weeks. This is it for this episode, subscribe now and stay tuned for tips on top players that you must have in the next video. Check out our Facebook, Twitter and website for daily updates. Thank you for watching and bye for now.